I suppose on, on Michael Collins' final journey, he was um, travelling through West Cork, which was, it was ironically his own area, but it was also the where most of the hugely experienced uh, IRA men who had put it up to the Black and Tans uh, during the War of Independence were, were based. So he was going to come up against some of the most experienced uh, guerrilla fighters in the country. So really, he couldn't have picked a more dangerous place, really, to be driving through uh, on that journey. And Collins and his men didn't realise anti-treaty IRA leaders were meeting in the Berne Blas area that day. So Collins drove right into a hornet's nest. So when the Collins convoy came in then, there was an exchange of shots between the men uh, removing the mines and Michael Collins' men. And the anti-treaty IRA lads got off the road, up onto the high road, and they opened fire down onto Michael Collins' convoy. And when Michael Collins' car came around the bend where the monument is now at Bell Nabla that evening, the windscreen of the car was shattered, the side panels were also hit with bullets, and Dalton next to Collins gives the order, drive like hell, but Michael Collins reaches forward, he taps the driver on the shoulder and he says, no, stop and we'll fight them. All the vehicles stopped, all of Michael Collins' men jumped out, returning the fire. Now at that stage, the anti-treaty IRA men were being chased up on the high road, which overlooked the road where the Collins convoy was travelling on. They were being chased up there, the anti-treaty lads by Collins' men from the truck in front of the, the convoy. And for a while, the anti-treaty lads were trapped up on that high road between the machine gunner and the armoured car, firing his Vickers machine gun at them, and Michael Collins' men were behind them on foot. But the next thing, the machine gun and the armoured car jammed. And that's when the IRA began to run off opposite Michael Collins up on the high road, and he went following them along the lower road. And at one stage, Michael Collins fired a few shots with his rifle from behind the armoured car, and then seeing the anti-treaty IRA lads running off up on the hill in front of him, Collins shouts forward to his men, look lads, they're running up the road. And then he steps out Michael Collins onto the open road. And he was shot in the head, standing, firing his rifle off the shoulder, about 15 yards behind the armoured car. They ran around the back of the armoured car and they found Michael Collins lying on the road, his head resting on top of his rifle, his cap had fallen off, and there was this massive gaping wound the size of your fist above and behind his right ear. A few minutes later, Michael Collins' men took him out on the side of the road in a forward, safer position. And it was there while they were bandaging his head and saying the act of contrition into his ear that they suddenly noticed Michael Collins' face go pale. He closed his eyes and he was gone. Was he reckless? I suppose looking back at it now, we have to say he was. But then this man, his middle name was Reckless. He was the same guy who went around Dublin every day at the height of the War of Independence riding a bicycle, the most wanted man in Europe. So how can we expect him to change here in, in West Cork? So he made a few, I suppose, decisions, uh, uh, particularly in Bairn Blah that day. First of all, electing to stop and fight the ambush party when they could have kept going. And then in the middle of the action, he stepped out onto the open road where he was shot in, in the head.